If you follow the news about TypeScript, then uh, you should probably know that in the latest version of the language, we had a major infrastructural change where the entire code base has been restructured to use ECMAScript modules instead of namespaces. So why did the maintainers chose to use modules instead of namespaces? Well, my friends, in this uh, episode of Too Long to Read TypeScript, uh, we will do a deep dive on namespaces. Let me explain what is a namespace, what problem is trying to solve, and how you can use namespaces to structure your code into multiple files. We will talk about nested namespaces and ambient namespaces. We will also compare them to modules to understand which one we should use uh, in our code base. I have collected everything that I know about namespaces in this video, so let's switch on it. How about Joey Peponi? <laughs> oh, still too ethnic. My agent thinks I should have a name that's more neutral. Joey Switzerland? <laughs> oh, that's probably a wrong channel. Um, one minute, one minute, I, I, I get it. Hello friends, it's Nikos here and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, in this series I'm trying to put together everything I know about TypeScript. Every week we are exploring a feature of the language with practical examples and real life scenarios. So all you have to do if, this, uh, if all these concepts sound Greek to you, uh, you should check out my TypeScript course. It's, uh, the link is in the description of this video and you can enroll for free. Today's episode is all about namespaces. So what exactly is a namespace? Well, you know that TypeScript is a language for programming types in JavaScript. But what happens when you have two or more types with the exact same name? I have a button, you have a button. I have a type filter function, you have a filter function. I have a type user model, you have a user model. And the list goes on. So how do we prevent those conflicts? Well, TypeScript creators thought about this and they introduced the idea of an internal module. But because this was actually conflicting with the ES modules, they decided to do some rebranding and now they call it namespace. So namespaces, uh, a namespace is like a wrapper in which you can put a lot of different uh, types. So when you declare a type in TypeScript, if you don't have any uh, export keyword to make it a module, it's going to live in the global scope. And with the namespaces, you can somehow create your own uh, scopes and uh, add whatever you want inside. So let's go directly to my code editor to see all these things in action. Okay, so let's see how we can use namespaces. Well, uh, consider this code. Uh, we have three types here, one enum, HTTP status codes, um, it should be codes, I guess, a class, error response, and an interface user. So somebody can use these types to create, uh, for example, a new user. We can say this is a user. Um, and of course, it will not work because um, this should be const. OK, and um, yeah, the name is not declared. Let's declare a name. Let's call it Nikos. Hmm, what a surprise. OK, so uh, normally what you want to do is uh, when you want to share code, right, you want to export your types. So here, for example, we export this, that and that. Maybe you don't want to export everything, right? Maybe you don't want to export, for example, the error response and the HTTP status codes because these are internal implementation details of your file, of this kind of module that you're using. But here we are not using modules. Here we are using namespaces. OK, to use a namespace, uh, everything is very simple. You just use the namespace keyword and you provide the name. Let's call it my app. 
And uh, what we want to do is basically to wrap uh, everything inside this bracket. So everything that is inside my app, it will be included in my namespace. Now, uh, you will notice that uh, our user type cannot be found. Why is that? Well, that's because uh, when you declare these types here, if you don't put them inside a namespace, they live in the global scope, which means that these types will be accessible from any other TypeScript file in your project. Uh, of course, this depends on your uh, compli compiler settings, but uh, that will happen somehow automatically without having to import them. So normally we have the tendency to export and import files, and this changes a little bit uh, the mechanics uh, on what is available in the global scope. However, if you have stuff in the global scope and you want to isolate them, then if you use a namespace uh, here, instead of using directly your types, you need to provide the name of the namespace. And now uh, this user is not any user, it's the user that I have inside my app. So I have a user and you probably may have a different user. So if I choose here to have, uh, for example, an object or a class window, um, this will not have any conflict with the window class of uh, the browser, right? Because I will use my app.window to refer to this specific class. Um, I don't need a class window at the moment, so I will not declare that. However, one interesting thing I would like to show you about namespaces is uh, what will happen if we compile our example here. So let me fire up my terminal and let me compile my index.ts file and then this immediately it will produce our index.js file. Now let's put these files side by side just to compare what is included in our index. Um, and as you can see, pretty much namespaces are available at runtime, which means they will somehow encapsulate everything you put between these two brackets. So uh, here, for example, I, I have my enum uh, HTTP status codes. I also have uh, my class here, error response. Um, where is my user? Somebody will ask. Well, uh, if you remember, interfaces are a TypeScript only feature and they are not available at runtime. So it is by design that I don't see anything here. However, if I choose not to export uh, my interface user, if I have, for example, the interface user here within my namespace, my app, without using any export, you will notice that uh, basically it's not available outside of my namespace. So uh, consider a namespace something like a class, right? Something that is not public, it's not available. Something that is private, for example, uh, can only be used inside uh, of your object. And uh, basically that's a namespace. We just saw that uh, a namespace is not an abstract TypeScript only feature, but it actually organizes your code by isolating it inside objects. Another cool feature of namespaces is the ability to merge their implementation. Let me show you how this works. Okay, here we are in the same example. Let me uh, close this because we don't need it anymore. And um, what I will do is export my interface user because I want to use it outside my namespace. And um, right after my namespace, I will declare another namespace. But instead of using another namespace, I will actually redeclare the my app inter, uh, namespace. And here, let's put a const, um, for example, API key and let's uh, use a very accurate API key. Okay, so um, let's export it. And um, 
you will notice something very, very interesting here. My API key is now a part of my app. So if I go here and um, create, for example, an API key variable, what I can do is my app dot API key. And this has become a very nice constant inside my app namespace. And actually, you can uh, put this in uh, any other file, right? Uh, I just put it inside the same file, but uh, uh, this is just a demonstration for you to understand that uh, namespaces can be merged and uh, everything that is inside my first namespace will be merged with the second instance and uh, this will be like it was never existed. This feature may remind you uh, the declaration merging that we have uh, in the interface uh, keyword. And this works exactly the same. So you have multiple files that uh, you can declare the same instance, the same um, uh, my app uh, namespace or whatever namespace, and then you can add new features. So uh, up until now, we were putting everything into one single file. So we had our uh, namespace declaration there, another declaration of the same namespace, and we also had, uh, the, we were consuming this namespace. But uh, how namespaces are meant to be used is basically to break apart all these declarations into multiple files. So let's see how we can break this code uh, apart into multiple files and how we can manage the dependencies. So let's start with the first one. Okay, I made some changes to our previous namespace. I renamed it to my service. And what I would like uh, to add in this uh, service is everything about my API. So here I have, for example, my API key. Uh, I have uh, this uh, enum uh, HTTP status codes, which can be either okay or a bad request. Obviously, this is an example. We are not going to produce an actual application. Uh, it's just a demonstration how we can break our code apart. Okay, what else do we have here? We have a type error response, and this can be either string, maybe an error that you don't want to display on screen to the user, or it can be an object with a message, direct message to the user, and an error code for the developers. And we have our uh, interface, which has uh, the user interface, sorry, that has a name, and our fetch user function, which is an asynchronous function that just fetches uh, my user. Okay, uh, down below you will see that we are declaring a new user and we are just uh, console log logging our API key. Pretty, pretty fine. Okay, so what I want to accomplish now is to break this namespace apart into multiple files. And um, let's create a, f a new folder for that. Let's call it my service. And here, what I want to do is to have uh, every of these components, somehow we need to break it. Um, let's start with the HTTP status codes dot ts so this can be easily exported into a different file and here we will say namespace my service and we will paste the enum okay this is gone um, i think we can also e uh, expose this error response let's cut it from here and let's create a new file error response dot ts again I am declaring the same namespace. Here, uh, you should be careful a bit with the typos. You should type your namespace exactly the same. Otherwise, this will create a different namespace. If you make a typo, it will not uh, add, it will not merge the declaration to the existing namespace. Okay, so here we have our error response. What else can we export? Um, let's group those two. I guess we can uh, create a user.ts and here one more time let's paste these two here okay pretty pretty nice so we have my user 
uh, we have the error response, we have the status code. Every uh, one of these files starts with my namespace, uh, my service. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, it would be nice if we also transfer this declaration here because this has nothing to do with my app. Uh, we are in main.ts. I just renamed index.ts to main uh, because this is my main file. Okay, and here what we can do is create index.ts within my service and basically just paste my uh, service namespace. Okay, so this started to have uh, some logic here. We have um, a very nice index file which just adds the API key. We have uh, the user service, the error response type, and the status uh, HTTP status codes. Okay, great. The next part is to just compile our application. So let's fire up our terminal and pxtsc. Let's press hit enter. And um, now you will notice something a little bit weird, uh, but it actually makes sense. TypeScript has created uh, one JavaScript file per TypeScript file. What I mean is that next to main.ts, we have the main.js. And um, the code seems nice here. It uh, looks, it seems logical. However, it will not work because um, it's kind of not connected. So there is no dependency across our files. Um, another uh, strange behavior is that there are files like, for example, this um, um, uh, error response type that you see this file is empty because uh, actually this is a type and if you remember type aliases are only available in TypeScript. They will never make it at runtime. Okay, so uh, what we need to do here is two things. First of all is to change our compiler settings uh, and I will do that in a minute. And the second thing is to manage dependencies. Uh, let's delete these files first. I'm selecting all the JavaScript files. Let's delete them right away. Of course, there is a better way to do that. However, uh, I think we are fine. And now let's open our TypeScript compiler configuration file. And here what I want to have is um, we do have, as you can see here, uh, auto completion. What I want is to include the main entry point for my application, which is the main dot ts file and just to spice it up i want to set the out dear folder let's uncomment this line and let's set it to i don't know dist or something like that so this is basically the output folder for everything that typescript will compile and our first line this one here this is uh the main entry point for our application so all all of our code starts from main.ts. Okay, so um, you will notice now that everything goes red when I open the main.ts because TypeScript doesn't know from where this my service namespace is coming from. This is not in the global scope because we haven't defined anything here like namespace, uh, my service, for example. If that was in this file, that should have worked. However, we have my service in a separate file. So the question now is how to basically import. Let's use this uh, concept of import from the modules uh, that we saw last time. Uh, how can we somehow tell TypeScript from where uh, to find this dependency? OK, so far we managed to create a folder that contains everything about my service. And um, we broke uh, our code apart uh, onto multiple files. So we have very nice organization inside our project. We also changed uh, the TypeScript compiler settings 
to have a single starting point. So we don't want to blindly compile all the TypeScript files in our application. We just want a single uh, starting point, And from there, we want to manage uh, everything that is happening. Of course, this depends on the project. For example, if uh, you're building a library, if you are writing code and you want to have different uh, files that are not interconnected, then you may want to have the default uh, compiler settings. However, if you are building an application, then probably it's not a good idea. And the last part that is missing is to tell TypeScript how to interconnect those files, uh, how to manage dependencies. And for that, I'm going to uh, show you a feature which is called triple slash directive. And I don't think you will, you will not like it, but um, let me show you how it works. Okay, so um, here we are. Uh, back to our code and we have the main.ts file and all we have to do is somehow to associate to tell TypeScript that you know this my service here is under our folder my service inside our index.ts and we can do that by adding a comment. The comment needs to start with uh, triple slash that's why uh, it got its name that's how it got its name. Uh, we press uh, space and here we have a reference tag, which is a self-closing tag and it has the path attribute. And here uh, we want to say that this is under my service slash index dot TS. And um, this actually solves the problem now because my service is actually recognized by TypeScript. However, if I go here and type my service, you will see that we only have the API key included in our um, object. So um, what's what went wrong? Because if I open this file here, you will notice that this file actually doesn't know about all these other files. So the same thing needs to be applied here. Um, we have two ways to solve this and it depends on how uh, the logic of our code uh, goes. So for example, here I can say that, you know, um, let's add another reference and let's add, for example, the user because that's what I want to use. The other idea is to actually cut this part and go to our index file and have our reference here. Uh, this will not work because we are already inside the my service folder. And now if I go back to main.ts, this works perfectly fine. So somebody will like this approach that we have here, for example, uh, HTTP status codes. Um, and here we have our error response. However, again, it's up to you to find uh, what is the best pattern, how you want to organize your code. And basically that's it. We have managed to uh, have a reusable namespace, uh, my service, which isolates everything that is included here. So all these items have their own scope and they don't pollute uh, the global scope of our application. And the last part is of course to uh, compile everything, uh, npx, uh, let's run our TypeScript compiler. And uh, what I would expect now is to have everything inside our dist folder. And that's exactly what is happening here. We have everything compiled inside our dist folder. We just managed to fix the dependencies and compile our application. Uh, you saw that every uh, TypeScript file within our, uh, every namespace uh, TypeScript file has been converted to a corresponding uh, JavaScript file. So how we somehow run this thing, right? How we tell the browser how to interconnect all these files? Well, the answer, again, will uh, you will not like the answer. <laughs> so basically, you have to import these as separate scripts in your browser. So you have to import our namespaces one by one uh, and actually the sequence that you have to use these script tags um, is uh, playing a lot of role. And this is how we used to uh, implement applications in the very uh, past. 
So uh, that's not the modern way of uh, writing, creating applications for the web. And um, that's one of the main reasons why you should not depend on uh, namespaces to build your modern applications. Okay, so now let's see two more features of the namespaces and then we will compare them with modules, two modules. Another cool feature of namespaces is basically nested namespaces. Um, here we have, for example, my service and what I can do is define another namespace, my app, and then this will become my app dot my service dot api key of course i'm not going to implement this logic here however i just wanted to show you that it's possible to have multiple levels of namespaces and this somehow uh, works like an object that has properties and these properties are uh, again more objects and more and more and more so now you know how to nest your namespaces to create multiple levels Another very useful feature of uh, namespaces is the ambient namespace. Well, sometimes you want to refer to a specific variable that exists somewhere in the outer scope of your application, something that you cannot control from within your code base. So many JavaScript developers face this problem. For example, the window object that exists in every browser, right? Um, how can you tell TypeScript to um, uh, understand that this thing exists and I want uh, to use it within my application? Or for example, an environment variable, for example, uh, an API key that we saw just now. You can do all this with an ambient namespace. And this is uh, like an abstract class. It defines what's inside minus the implementation. So you can define what is out there, but you cannot uh, define, you cannot write the implementation. Okay, let me show you how to create ambient namespaces. Uh, you have to create a new file. Uh, let's call this file lib, for example. And here's the catch. You need to use d.ts. So you cannot just have .ts, but you need dts. So this is a definition file for TypeScript. And then um, you basically declare your namespace. Uh, this can be window, for example. Uh, but you need to use the declare keyword. So this is what makes the magic together with the uh, extension d.ts. This is one of the best ways to uh, add types to an existing JavaScript uh, library that is not being uh, written in TypeScript. For example, if I want to use one of the uh, libraries, uh, old ones like jQuery or Moment.js, um, these libraries are very old. The code base uh, was written back then when uh, TypeScript was not even a thing. So um, to solve this, what I can do is create ambient namespaces and uh, describe their API in a way that I can use this API to my TypeScript applications. And there's a very nice library called uh, Definitely Typed. And there you can find types for pretty much every popular JavaScript library, including the ones that I mentioned before. And uh, you may probably already used one of these libraries. If you ever had to npm install uh, save dev something like types slash jQuery. And that's exactly how the uh, popular repo definitely typed is uh, working. For those who aren't familiar with it, this is a repository for high quality TypeScript type definitions. And you may have used one of these definitions already in your project. If you ever have installed an NPM package uh, that has a prefix uh, types in your projects, and most probably uh, this is coming from uh, the definitely typed repo. Um, I'm actually planning to create an episode on uh, how to create your own type definitions for your libraries. Uh, and uh, yeah, just ping me, uh, write me in the comments down below if this is important for you. I will uh, put it at the top of my backlog. It's useful to compare namespaces with uh, modules 
and understand the differences and similarities. So both namespaces and modules uh, help you organize your code into separate files and they both help you avoid uh, conflicts uh, in the global scope since they both execute in their local scope. However, modules are declarative and um, they are easy to reason about. Uh, you saw how namespaces are difficult to understand from where they are coming from and you need to follow manually all these references to go back to the source of truth. That's not the case with a module, which are more suitable for modern applications and they are actually an ECMAScript standard, which means that uh, modules is an actual uh, JavaScript feature. Uh, namespaces was the solution that TypeScript uh, developers have thought to overcome some of the uh, uh, difficulties of the JavaScript language, but now JavaScript has been involved and it provides much better features. So modules are more flexible and uh, they help you build a reusable API. Now let's go to namespaces. So uh, as we saw, namespaces are hard to work and reason about, uh, but they have some uh, potential uh, usages. They are suitable for creating type definitions because they support basically ambient uh, types. Uh, we can use the existing JavaScript applications that are legacy and they were never migrated to TypeScript and uh, we can add these type definitions to uh, help the, uh, help the uh, TypeScript projects to uh, understand their API. So unlike modules uh, in which you really have to declare uh, what you are exporting, with namespaces you can have an abstract declaration. Okay, great. So uh, basically if uh, you are writing, um, I don't know, if you are a maintainer of the definitely typed uh, repo, then most probably you have to use namespaces. But I know most of the people are not, so most probably for your own project you need to use modules. And uh, this is the only way to go when you're building a modern application. I know what you're thinking. Namespaces are just ugly. And I'm telling you, there is not a single person in the TypeScript community who likes to structure their code this way. To me, this uh, reminds me of C++. Uh, it's complicated to follow, it's easy to make mistakes, and it's harder to write code like this. I mean, we can do better, and we do have a better way. Check out my previous video about ES modules and how you can use them uh, together with TypeScript. I have explained everything I know about modules and I think you're gonna like that episode. So if you liked what you see, press the thumbs up button and uh, you should also check out my uh, blog post about uh, namespaces. You can find everything I presented to you in this video, including the coding examples. It's a nice way to review what you've learned. And uh, yeah, if you're curious, you can try them by yourself. Now, if you like the way I am teaching stuff, then you can check out my complete too long to read TypeScript course. It's available for free and you can find the link in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, thank you very much for watching and for supporting my channel. If you like what you saw, then uh, consider pressing the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and uh, have a creative day. See you in the next one.